Hello and welcome to another instalment of my reviews for GT Power. This one is the um, trailer lighting system which is wireless infrared technology. So let's have a look at what this is all about. Right, this is just going to be something that is only going to be used with the two multifunction control systems that GT Power do. We get instructions on how to fit the sender and receiver infrared. And it's all in English. I have read through that and it, um, it does look pretty clear, not the usual translation from Chinese to English, which is hard to decipher. This is actually quite good. So yeah, pretty impressed with that. So it does look like things are getting slightly better. We have the um, main control system, which has the main um, power input there on the instructions here it does say that they're not used on here and here it's just the uh, battery input and it also shows you on here that the top three aren't used and just the infrared receiver port at the bottom is used it tells us also that we've got the negative positive and signal wire going from left to right and there's the ports for the lights down here so that is basically it the lights that go in there little mode switch there nothing on the back nothing on that side so yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Have a couple of uh, bolts and nuts. I would say that is for the sender infrared. Battery lead with a male and female XT60 so I don't use XT60 I use EC3 so I'll have to use one of my adapters then we have the receiver which is pretty flush And we have, where's the little receiver, the sender, that's that one, which is sticking out. So it should give us a good angle of vision for the thing. That's uh, actually quite long and that looks um, quite long also. I will measure them actually out of interest so we can see what we're going to get. It does tell us on the instructions what we need to make this work is my test board. We need two control units because we are going to try them uh, both and we need a radio and we need something to power it all up so I've got some 2S LiPos in there so give me two minutes and uh, I'll be back with it all wired in. We're going to try this one first. Right then, 
that's all wired in the unit and the lights the sender and the receiver for infrared now what I've done first according to the instruction manual of that is to take out of J9 which is the brake lights for the truck and plug it into J13 and it tells you here brake light on the container so the J9 is just the brake light so now we're plugging in the infrared sender straight into J9 okay and then that's all we have to do with that the other thing we have to do is on the box of this see these um, four switches just here well they seem to have been updated to something I would say that is a little bit better so you see these four switches just down here and we see that there's a number two these are all default to um, down I believe it is factory default is down yeah it does say that on the instructions just here so I tried to um, faff about trying to switch this let me just uh, get that but what I found is that there is a small membrane over this so if I can hold that at the same time and you have to be able to activate those switches you have to take this little membrane off fiddly so you'll need a pair of tweezers very very sticky and there it is and there's one of those over each of those switches so it's number two on this um, bottom one just here so we need to flick that switch up I've already done that so there's no need to worry about that so I'm not going to mess with any of the other three in this top bank and number one on this bottom so now it's all um, plugged in I've just gone and used an adapter for this so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly um, stick you back in the tripod because there is no switch for this uh, system now it does say make sure for the first time that the sender and the receiver infrared modules are as close together as possible so Let's connect that. You'll see they just very briefly flashed. And this is now LED just here is set to stable. So now make sure that those are pointing directly at each other okay and then we turn on we to turn on my radio first cool that's on the test board because i've set up this mfc on the test board um and then we aha yeah, what we have to do first is press and hold this until that starts to flash and then when we turn on the MFC I 
that has now stopped flashing so that is paired for the first time now i'm not sure if you can have a pairing with different legs i don't know if there's a different modulation for that similar to bluetooth but that's something i'm going to have to look into and then this quite a generous um, cable is for the infrared receiver and it looks like you get really good link to that looks like about a meter and a half four and a half feet I don't know what the thing is for that but right so that's pointing at that let's actuate the MFC and let's get some indicators going there's a hazard warning lights on the truck and that's replicated via that I'll turn those off and I'll steer left and right then we have brake lights, backup lights, and side lights. And let me just alter the trim and turn on the side lights. There's the side lights, and you've got your auxiliary lights. Now, in the kit, as I pointed out, you have um, two orange and two white there your choice that thing shuts down after a while so so that's the side lights and auxiliary lights off let's move those two out of the way and brake lights Oh, yeah. So I would say that is pretty good. So now what I want to do is to see, obviously that's going to be on your trailer. So I want to test how far we can actually move this. So give me a minute. So the infrared trailer lighting system paired up to the container truck lighting and sound system I've just measured this lead and it is 1.4 meters I'm going to review that in a bit um, so let's fire this up let's get the um, hazard warning lights on might look like they're not flickering right, that's better now it's running so as we can see that is uh, one inch 25 millimeters away if I block this off, these stay static because there's no signal and once the signal is back, see? So let's see how far away, that's, that's 10 inches.
that is over a meter that's 110 centimeters which is that's 48 inches so that's four feet and it's still working so four feet away that's, that's as much as it's got so there you go now what about angle because obviously when you turn a corner start it up again because these flicker erratically when it's not so that's there let's have a look at the angle so we are currently looking at 48 inches which is approx 1.35 meter and then as the angle But I hate that when it shuts down and just start it back up. So let's go at six inches and we're almost at forty five degrees there. Wow. I would say that that is pretty much 180 degrees. So you're going to get a good angle on a trailer. Let's go about 24 inches away at 45 degrees. Well, we're going really. Auto shut down. So about 24 inches away, and it's still working. I would say that that is pretty impressive. I think it's something to do with the LED being stuck out, and then on this side for the trailer, it's recessed in. So you would have to drill a hole in the back of your truck for this one. And then mount this in the front of the trailer so you can see. I am pretty impressed with that. So, yeah, what do you think? I think that's pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wire up the other option that I've got, which is the EU version. And this doesn't seem to have those switches. So I'm going to find out if it works with this one as well and if it does tell you how okay i have just spent another um 10 minutes just removing the the other system 
and putting in the new Euro version which doesn't have the switches down here so I wanted to see how it does this little connection here just there is the antenna for the Bluetooth so in these instructions for the Pro EU the European sounding one um, it says here that J13 is for the container trailer wireless tail light and that J9 is still the brake light so I've left the brake light in this one just here and I've plugged in the infrared sender which is still taped here um, straight into J13 just there um, I've not really spent much time populating this with the headlights all I'm interested in is the rear lights and uh, that is basically the same as what it was when we left so again on this one um, what we have to do is connect the power and this light will stay on a little blue LED there let's get rid of that up there and then what we have to do is press and hold uh, this button until that LED flashes and then we turn on this system I'll make sure the radio is also on and there we go so that's all switched on so we'll just start the engine and we can see that that has stopped flashing So, indicators, this is the wireless, this is the um, truck, So that's all that, and we have brake lights and reversing lights on both sides. So that's all good, and of course this is completely independent. It's just this that's connected to the multifunction unit. Um, Let's have a see if this still reaches four feet. Yep, still reaches uh, 48 inches. So it's the same with both of the GT Power units. So yeah, that works um, pretty good. We stick you in tripod and you just go through what we've got we have got let me uh, turn that off and unplug um, that system so we have two GT power um, control systems for your truck. This is the American version and this one is the EU. It says it here. Um, so we know that this works with both of them. So yeah, I like it. If you want to use the GT Power sound and light systems you can use this as well apparently it doesn't work on 
the cheaper one a thumbs up because I appreciate seeing that you like this sort of stuff and uh, I will see you in the next one.